I really love this question, so follow me here. I keep hearing all these warnings about challenging a favorable decision, yet most everything I read from respectable online resources, speaking of this happening very, very seldom, what are the actual numbers when it comes to favorable decisions that have been re reversed upon a request for review? And how does res judicata not protect the pre previous judicial decision that has already been decided? I almost see this warning as a mass fail to not challenge what may very well be a claimant's right. All right, I love this question. And let me tell you why I love this question. Um, because I want to make sure people understand kind of what the context of this is. Uh, because this was actually posted under challenging um, a favorable decision when, when the person's onset date has been changed. It's what we call a partially favorable decision. This is going to sound cop like I'm giving a cop out. But really, at the end of the day, it's not. I'm going to say this very bluntly, so please follow along. I'm an attorney. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a chef. I am an attorney. As an attorney, I am bound by various ethical rules. And one of the ethical rules I'm bound by is to not create any unrealistic expectations. One of the things that I try my best to do when I'm doing these videos is I don't tell you what you should or you should not do. At least I try my best not to. Now, I may say to you, you might be you might be a little crazy to try something, but it's at the end of the day, I always tell all my clients, the choice is really yours. It's your, it's your choice. My responsibility is, my responsibility is to manage expectations. And by doing so, I must tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's just the reality. So let's pause on this for a second, because in light of what this gentleman had brought to my attention, his concern, and first of all, I don't have the specific numbers, but let me just kind of throw it out here in, in its proper context. His concern, and, and I may be wrong, he's been very, he's one of the persons here, I can't remember his name, but I, I always recognize his, his username whenever I see it come up because he's very, very proactive and he's been following me for a while. And his comments on the, my on, on all my various videos have always been spot on. So I've always been very appreciative of the fact that, you know, I've gotten some comments on here where I'm like, whoo, they are really setting it off. But he's very articulate in ensuring that he's very, he's giving you his feedback from someone who's clearly taken a proactive role in educating himself about the process. And I applaud him for that. But I got to make sure I address what he said in appropriate context. I tell people when they come to me and they get a partially favorable decision, this is my standard spiel. So let me share it with you. You bear the responsibility of accepting what that judge is giving you because ultimately they ask me, should I appeal? Well, this is my rule of thumb. This is Reeves rule of thumb. I don't know what anybody else does. But this just works for me. If it's only a couple of months, less than a year, why fight it? Why do I say that? I know money is tight. I get money is tight, but let's be realistic here. This is what may happen. And I understand what your rescue Dakota is saying. Rest judicata is only once that decision become, really comes into effect, really, when it comes final. Rest judicata is a nice way of saying, you know, a rest judicata is kind of a Latin phrase for the thing, something, something already decided. Okay? And so ultimately what he, the, the um, our poster is putting, commenter is putting is that if it's already been decided from that, Shouldn't that be grounds under the concept of res judicata as a decision that's already been decided upon? I think I would agree with you only if that decision becomes final. If you appeal it, it's not final. You see what I'm saying? You kind of follow my school of thought? Think of it like this. You get a decision by a judge and you decide that you want to appeal that to the, for a request for review of the, the appeals council. So they're reviewing your decision because you have a decision, you have a concern about the finality of the decision. Well, that decision is not final until the request for review has been rendered. So if the appeals council agrees with you, they'll send it back for you to get a new one. In other words, they've said that decision is not final, throw it out. Same concept. If you get a favorable decision and you appeal it, 
you're basically telling the government that you disagree with it and that you don't want it to be final. The appeals gives you the ability to prevent it from being final. And I think that's where people kind of, and, and I love the fact he threw out the rest of that's where people kind of lose the sight. The rest of Judicata is on a decision that's final. The finality of it is what really makes it stand on its own. That's why whenever you have people who file a new application and they try to go back to an earlier application and the, and the judge says, hey, a prior judge has found you not disabled going backwards. It's rest judicata. I mean, that decision is final. You didn't appeal it. The, even though you appealed it, it wasn't overturned. So it is locked in stone. Same thing here. So if you've got a favorable decision and you don't like it and you appeal it, well, you're basically telling the government you don't want your current decision to be final. You are giving them the opportunity to re-review it. That's why I made that point. So let's kind of go back to where I'm saying so that you understand my, my point. Why do I tell you, if somebody comes to me and they say, I want to appeal, let me tell you the pros and cons of appealing. The three things that you say before, they can remain the stain, they can agree with you, give you more, or they can take it all away. Now, you look at those odds and you say, you know, the, the commenter asked a good question. Well, what's the likelihood? I mean, what's the numbers? And I'm like, and here's the problem that I have with numbers. Numbers is based on a generality of a whole group of individuals. I base this on dealing with specific individuals, meaning if there is a 60% likelihood or 50% likelihood, let's say that the number says 60% of the time or 70% of the time, if it's ever, if you appeal it and it comes back to the judge, the judge never overrules their prior decision. So you have nothing to rule, to, to lose. Okay, that's 60. What about the 40%? What happens if you run across that judge at 40% of the time? If you ever appeal his favorable decision or her favorable decision, they overturn it. But you don't know. And the problem is you don't know what that 40 is. Are you willing to roll the dice on a percentage that you're not sure is going to apply to you? That's why I put it out there like that. So when I talk to people, I say this. Here's the scenario that you're looking at. If it's less than a year, do you really want to roll that dice? If you want to, it's totally up to you. I always tell people, I, it's your party. It's your party, and I'm just here with the drinks. If you want to get down like that, you have every right to do so. Recognize that any time, this is what I tell people. I don't care if I've done civil litigation, and I tell people this all the time. Any time you take your case to a court for review, you roll the dice because you are putting your case in the hands of someone who is not you to give you what you want. So if a judge has decided that he believes or she believes you're disabled to this particular point, I will look at the case. I will evaluate the evidence. I will say if the evidence is supportive of the time the judge gave it to you, I will say the judge, I believe, I agree with the judge. You have every right to appeal that. And a lot of times, and I, and I understand, there's a lot of people who listen to these videos, and I know his concern is he wants me to be responsible and not scare people away from pursuing their rights. And I don't want to be, I, I know I shouldn't say this, i got to toot my own horn. This is why I tell people you need an attorney. Because the reality is, let's be real here. Roll your dice with medical evidence that's strong. If i got a strong case, I've done this before, where I've had a strong case where the medical evidence clearly demonstrates the person should have gotten eight, nine months before the date that that judge picked. I'll tell the person, I think the date stinks because your records go back that far. I think you should appeal it because you're entitled to those months. However, keep in mind, we're only talking eight months. Do you really want to roll the dice? It's up to you. I think the records are strong, but I cannot in good conscience and ethically tell you you have a guaranteed shot of that, I have a guaranteed shot that judge giving you exactly what you want. I'm just trying to be the first to tell you. Okay? So keep that thought in the back of your mind. Note I said it's less than a year. Let's say it's more than two years. Typically, I tell people that if it's more than a two-year period of time, man, you got to do that thing because you're talking about, let's say you applied and you said you became, in 2011, you became disabled in 2010, and this is 2013, and they say you became disabled this year. Wait a minute. That means two and a half, almost three years worth of back pay. They're not trying to pay you. I'm like, roll the dice. Because at this point, you do have the risk of losing what you have going monthly. But if you're trying to go for that back pay, if I believe them, and it all boils to your medical records. Now, if it's between a year and two, I typically defer to the client. At the end of the day, as the attorney, I always defer to the client. And the reason why I say I always defer to the client is because this is your case. 
Only you can tell me whether you want to take the chance. Now, you'll ask a million questions because I've had them say, what do you think about the medical records? What do you think about the possibility of them overturning it? If it comes back to the judge, do you think you'll do it again? And I will give my two cents. But at the end of the day, sometimes you just don't know. You really don't. So with this, I will say, with that, I will say this. At the end of the day, you bear the responsibility of proving you're disabled. If you want to take that risk, it's always a risk. Don't get fooled or caught up in the whole notion of the likelihood or percentages and all that stuff. You, you need to look at your facts specifically because I know a few judges. I've got like a couple of judges I've gone before that are rough. They're great judges. They are very, very tough. And if you got an approval from them, even for partially, you should consider yourself lucky. And these are the kind of judges that, unfortunately, and I understand you'll say, well, they shouldn't be like that. Don't put your hands on someone who I will tell you they may more than likely overturn their decision because I've seen that happen too. In any event, at the end of the day, if you're not sure if you should fight your case, I don't want you to blindly just think the likelihood of it happening being overturned because they previously found you deny, uh, proved is pretty much a guarantee. Don't roll the dice. Don't do that. Let somebody review your case for you. Make that independent determination. This way, when you go in, you'll know whether or not it's in your best interest.